Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma uh, instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the attribute gauge r, &R uh, using Minitabs version 20. So a uh, attribute gauge r, &R is, is a measurement systems analysis, basically looking at uh, the, the measurements you are getting from appraising something, uh, determining whether something is good or bad. Okay, uh, that would be an, an attribute uh, agreement analysis or an attribute measurement. Okay, and, but in particular, this, this is uh, an appraisal. Again, something's good or bad. <clears throat> so, um, the, the scenario we are uh, going to be looking at, and it, uh, you'll see the data uh, on the screen here, is um, we are doing an attribute agreement ana analysis or an attribute gauge r, &R um, of, uh, we have 10 cups, and inside of those 10 cups, we've got uh, a single M&M in each one of them. Uh, it's a peanut M&M. &M. Um, it's, uh, you can't touch the M&M, you can hold the cup and look inside uh, of the M&M, it's a clear cup, so you can look all around the M&M. Uh, and we have some criteria uh, of what a good and a bad M&M are. Okay, some of those criteria might be that uh, the M&M is not oval. Okay, so we have ov ovality as a criterion. Um, it might be that it ha has to be a complete shell. It can be broken or chipped. Okay, the, uh, the M uh, has to be clear or visible. Okay, uh, another one could be miscolored, meaning that maybe it's, it's got two colors instead of just one. All right, so um, I actually in our class, we, we let, uh, or in our green belt class, uh, we let our green belts give us those criteria. Uh, and then we, in, uh, we get some inspectors to inspect based on that criteria. All right, so what you're looking at is actual data of a, a uh, measurement system analysis, an attribute measurement system analysis. Um, and it, it was a data that was uh, gained from, from that uh, MSA. So in order to do this, we are going to go uh, through the assistant, all right? Uh, so the assistant really makes uh, analysis uh, easy for us. It, it, it does a lot, of, a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Minitab has uh, provided this uh, function called the assistant, and it, it uh, takes a lot of more popular uh, tests and analyses and makes it you know, uh, more accessible to us. So we're going to go into the measurement systems analysis. Um, and what's so great about the, um, the assistant is Minitab built the, this kind of a flow to, to um, uh, each of these tools. Uh, and this flow helps us to understand what to do because a lot of us you know, might be new to Lean Six Sigma, might be new to statistics, uh, new to some of these tools. So Minitab kind of helps us along. So uh, I might look at this and go, well, you know, do I have measurement data or do I have appraisal data? You know, I'm not really sure. Again, I'm kind of new to this and, and those terms are, are uh, uh, not, not known to me. You know, I, I don't have those memorized. So I look at the look at this and and say okay, uh, let's look and and see maybe what my data is and and I look and I uh, the appraisal data seems to fit my uh, what I have so this says pass fail but what I have is bad good All right so I I believe I have appraisal data based on this description. And then I come down to uh, my objective. Is it to analyze data or is it to set up a study? Okay, again, I'm not really sure which, you know, what, what I need to do with what I have. Uh, so I go into the objective. 
uh, and that tells me, you know, I, I got data and uh, I just need to analyze that data. Now, before we go in and do an analysis, I'm, I'm actually going to show you how to set up a study. Okay. Um, and, and when you do an MSA, you first have to set up the study that a lot of people really go wrong here. They just go and start measuring stuff, but they haven't really set up a study. Uh, and, and they run into trouble, you know, on the back end. So first we have to create the worksheet, the study, the, uh, the experiment. So we click on this uh, and this gives us the ability to actually set up uh, a, a uh, study. All right. So in this case, let's say that we have three appraisers. The appraisers are the inspectors. Okay. Those are the people that are inspecting. Um, and let's say that our trials, we're, we're, we're going to repeat the inspection twice. And really, the more times you repeat the inspection, the better, the better your understanding of what truly is going on with the inspection. All right. Same with appraisers. The more appraisers, uh, the, the better you're going to understand truly what's going on. So um, we have a uh, number of items, how, how many test items or how many things are we going to measure? All right. So in this case, I've only got 10, uh, 10 cups with M&Ms in them, right? Uh, I, I, the more cups of M&Ms I have, the better I'm going to understand whether I can inspect uh, well or not. Okay. And it says, what are the values of, the, uh, of your known standards? Okay. A good or acceptable item is, is we'll mark that good. Uh, bad or unacceptable item, we'll mark that as bad. Okay. And then over here, <clears throat> this is where uh, somebody has to go in and actually put what the known standard is. So if item one that, that we've got out as, as an experiment, you know, cup number one with that M&M in it, uh, we have to know before the experiment whether it is truly good or bad because we, we have to see how well they inspect to what the known standard is. All right, so we got to we, we we have to list that as good or bad. Now, I, I actually don't have uh, those cups of M and M's in front of me, so I don't know that. But that's how we set up the uh, uh, the worksheet. Okay, I'm not going to set it up because I don't want to go through and set it uh, each good or bad. But once you do that, you can hit OK, and it will give you a worksheet, and that worksheet will look something like this. Okay, it will have samples uh, and attributes, and it has it will have the master. Okay, then it will have. Uh, I'm sorry, it will have sample, it will have master and appraisers, but the the attribute will not be filled in. All right, that is the actual uh, uh, appraiser's uh, view of what that part is. He's going to tell you, or she's going to tell you whether it's good or bad. All right. And that might match up with the master, or it might not. Uh, again, we we are we are gauging the uh, measurement system to see how well it measures. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to use data that we've actually populated. So the attribute has been populated. Uh, we're going to go back up to the assistant measurement systems analysis, and our objective now is to analyze the data. Okay. So uh, we are going to put attribute, I'm sorry, appraisers in appraisers. Uh, we're not going to fill in trials, but in this case, I believe we have uh, three trials. Uh, test items. Uh, this is going to be our samples. Appraisal results. And this is the uh, actual attribute. Uh, the good or bad, and our known standard, that is the master, okay? And then uh, good and good and bad, that was uh, what we have listed for good parts, bad parts, and it says value of good or acceptable items. And in this case, we, we, uh, we determine or our signifier for a good part was the word good. 
So, but Minitab needs to know that so they understand what's good and what's bad. Okay, so we've got that all filled in. Go ahead, okay. <clears throat> all right, and we'll get some, we'll get a number of great graphs. Now, um, the first graph that you're going to see is always the summary report, but that's really kind of the last graph we want to look at. So we're going to go all the way down to uh, the report card. Uh, the assistant, it's such a great tool because it, it makes uh, analysis a lot easier for us to understand, especially those of us who really aren't statisticians. So it gives us a number of graphs and, and really explains them pretty simply. Uh, and that summary report helps to give us kind of a, the culmination of all the other graphs. So this report card is really just give, giving us information about what good data looks like in an attribute uh, measurement system analysis. Uh, and, and a lot of other report cards that it actually gives you data that tells you whether you might have a good data set or, or a representative data set or a normal data set. So it gives you some, some good intelligence about uh, the model or, or, or the uh, data that you're actually using. So in this case, it's really just giving us, you know, some, some information. It's not uh, that useful to us. All right. Um, another report it gives us is uh, called the misclassification report. This is a great report because this helps us to understand how we might be classifying something as good when it's really bad or bad when it's really good. So this can tell us where, where we might be letting things go out to, to the customer or we might be wasting money reworking something that is really good. Okay, and so that kind of breaks it down uh, between the overall good rated bad and bad rated good. Uh, then it kind of goes into um, uh, more detail, all right? Uh, it tells you about the parts and it tells you about the inspectors. Uh, we come up here and this is a, the accuracy report. This is really kind of looking at what's called the 95% confidence interval. All right, and, and we're not really gonna go deeply into this, but the 95% confidence interval, really this goes into um, uh, how confident we are that uh, our, our output is correct. So in this case, we say that Don is giving us a 70% uh, by appraiser, all right? Uh, their uh, uh, agreement um, by the appraiser. Okay, but that actually might not be the answer. Okay, now we say with the 95% that it's somewhere between 56.79 and 81.15. So that's our interval that our answer could be on. All right, we're just making hypotheses uh, that it's actually that 70%. Okay, then we come up to our summary report. Our summary report is really, you know, that's what our stakeholders want to see because it, it's very easy for them to understand. So it takes that misclassification rate and, and it uh, kind of gives you a summary of it. Uh, it tells you, you know, how accurate the appraisers are. Okay. Uh, and it gives you, you know, is the overall percent accuracy, is it acceptable? So, uh, and this is really kind of different per organization. So the, the there isn't, I, I don't believe there's really one good answer for this. It, it just depends on, on your organization. So if you're in a real noisy organization, say, say you're in a uh, uh, steel, steel mill uh, and, and there's a lot of dirt, grime, it's very dark. Um, it may be hard to really measure something. Uh, maybe there's a lot of hierarchical noise going on, all right? Uh, a lot of variables, you know, that, that you can't control. So it, it's really, you know, per the process. Uh, but I usually say anything, you know, below uh, an 85% 
uh, accuracy. I I I want to I want to go back and look at that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, shut this down. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay, uh, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Um, I hope you gained a little bit of uh, knowledge of the attribute agreement analysis uh, for attribute data. Um, it's a great tool, especially you know, uh, for appraisal data. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to um, contact me at kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. I will put that information down in the uh, uh, description uh, for you too. Uh, and everybody have a wonderful day and thank you.